Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I, I, these canalicular blocks are a nagging problem that uh, really uh, are challenging to treat. So we always keep looking for options which are uh, more, uh, cost, you know, aesthetically and functionally better. So I found this. Uh, the procedure trifinition with the in canalic, monocanalicular stent. I'll be talking about this. Uh, it's very attractive. So, uh, as you know, that uh, the classification of that blocks may be uh, distal or uh, proximal or common canalicular, and uh, 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 there are various authors who have given different. Uh, um, cutoffs for the proximal blocks. Some people they call less than five millimeters as proximal, and some put the cutoff at eight millimeters. So that is, uh, but five millimeter is the usual uh, uh, distance that is uh, accepted. And uh, now, uh, like as you know, canalicular blocks can either be congenital or acquired, and uh, Within that, you can have the, in the acquired blocks, you can have idiopathic trauma, trauma infections, cicatricial lesions, and uh, medications and neoplasm. So there's a host of causes which can cause these blocks. And uh, the treatment will depend whether there's a partial obstruction or a complete obstruction. And uh, partial obstructions are, uh, can, are more amenable to intubation, whereas the complete uh, obstructions will depend on the uh, the site of the block. The proximal blocks uh, obviously will require a conjunctivo DCR, which has its own pros and cons and uh, tube-related problems and the host of problems. And the distal blocks, uh, the surgical treatment, the conventional one is the canalicular DCR. And the other treatments which you can uh, have are the laser uh, canaliculoplasty and the balloon dilata uh, catheter dilatation with the intubation. Now, uh, there are a lot of constraints of the conventional treatment of canalicular DCR, like risk of bleeding, prolonged surgical time, delayed wound healing, your residual scarring, recurrence of symptoms, and poor patient uh, satisfaction. And of course, the success rate varies. It is not as high as a, as a DCR. It's in the range of about 60 to 70 percent. And now this uh, uh, trifine was uh, first uh, described by Sisler in 1990. So it's usually called the Sisler's trifine also. And uh, in his study, he found uh, 83, more than 83 percent success rate by canalicular trifinition. And uh, the recent studies have also seen the success rate as well as the uh, uh, you know, variation in the success rate according to the uh, the whether it, the site of the block, whether it's a distal or a proximal block, and found that the more distal the block, the higher the success rate. And uh, this is the the figure showing the how it, what what exactly we have. It's a 21 gauge stainless steel tube with a, these diameters mentioned here. There's a plastic hub, and then there is a, st a stylet inside, which is a metal stylet. So the basic uh, idea of putting the stylet is that the trifine does not start cutting before you want it to. So when you have the trifine in place, and then you remove the stylet, and then you expose the sharp edge of the trifine. The other potential uses of these mini trifine are that uh, it you can remove scar tissue, you can take biopsy specimens, and for drainage of cysts. And uh, this is your uh, mini monoca stent or the monocanalicular stent, which uh, you must have used in your can uh, canalicular repairs also, and a host of other indications. And uh, now the surgical procedure, basically that it's done under uh, topical and infiltration anesthesia dilate the punctum. I'll be showing you in the video, so I think we'll skip this uh, slide. So uh, after infiltrating the region, you dilate the punctum adequately. 
and uh, after that you just confirm the site of the block by the distance uh, which is uh, measure the distance of the site of the block and see and as you can see in this one it's about a 10 millimeter block so you are at the level of the common canaliculus and now the trephine is ins inserted and then after you reach the site of the block you withdraw the the stylet and then with the gentle to uh, rotatory movements you negotiate the block after uh, clearing the block when you achieved a hard stop after that you can confirm whether there is patency has been achieved through the hub of the trephine and uh, once you are sure that your patency is there you can you are sure then you can safely go ahead and put in a monocanalicular stent so in in this uh, particular series we had also tried to uh, augment the effect by mitomycin C. So this last portion of the video, uh, mitomycin C 0.04% was uh, kept for about uh, uh, 30 seconds and then irrigated after that. And now you can see that we are inserting the, the mini monoka stent with its collar. You can just safely just snugly put it there in the punctum without, you don't need to suture it. Okay, so uh, you can uh, post-refinition evaluation of patient can be done by either subjective parameters, grading the epiphora, or you can have uh, the objective parameters and see the patency and do the FDTT. And uh, these are some of the pictures showing the results. And uh, sometimes the punctal morphology may, this is, these are pictures showing the punctal morphology there after the stent. And uh, some complications can be expected uh, that you can have stent extrusion in some cases. You can have sometimes granuloma formation. It's rare, but these have been encountered. Anatomical success is usually high, but when you go to the functional success on FDDT and uh, syringing, it usually comes down a bit to about 66% uh, in this series. And uh, after that, the functional success with EPIP on was seen on FDTT, and it's again in the similar range. So anatomical success is always higher. And after that, when you because sometimes you may have a little kinking of the canaliculus. So uh, what are the main take-home points of the advantages of a canalicular trephination? As you have seen, it's a very minimally invasive procedure. It aims at achieving physiological uh, recanalization. It is uh, the success rate is comparable to the presently available other alternative treatments, and it is technically much simpler. It can be done as a simple office procedure. You don't need to admit the patient, and uh, it is aesthetically superior as there is no visible scar. Thank you for your attention.